Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. So I actually picked up this very nice little, I'm going to call it a bench or you could call it a short little bookshelf for $6.99 at my local Salvation Army. It is super heavy, and I thought, wow, what a deal of $6.99. So, of course, it needs some work. It wouldn't be at a thrift store if it was in perfect condition. So, if, of course, Chris is going to start off with just removing any of the price tags and any other tags that may be on this. So I'm sure you noticed right off the bat that there was a lot of scratches on the top of this. So he's just going to be mixing up some Durham water putty. It's a little bit of the powder and a little bit of water to the consistency that you you like. It's used just like or is a wood filler. So you just mix it up, put it on, and let it dry, and then sand it. So to get this piece cleaned, he's going to go with the crud cutter. So this is just a spray on, a wipe off, no rinsing required. You want to get this good and prepped. You want to get all that grime and grease and anything that might be left behind from, it was a thrifted item, so you know there's something on there. So for this piece, he's just going to be doing some undercoating of black. And the black is just going to be on the edges where he's going to be distressing the piece. So now he'll let that black dry and then he, I, I guess I needed to touch on that. He does not, he does not spray polycrylic over the black before moving on to the white. There's no need to do this with that black onyx paint. And then the way that he puts the Kills Paint and Primer and the way he sands it and distresses it, there's no need for him to have it in between to seal that black in. So now he's moving on to his second coat. So you can really tell the difference. That Kills Paint and Primer just covers so nice. I know that people have been saying that they've been having a hard time getting it, that maybe Walmart wasn't carrying it anymore. But every time I go, our local Walmart has got it back in stock. So I don't know if it was just an outage for a little bit but prayers answered for us because I don't know what I would switch to. Now that he has three to four coats on the one side, white is just that color that takes that many kind of coats. So now he's moving on to flipping the piece back over and getting the rest of it covered. This is just a personal preference to start from the bottom and then flip it over and work on the top. That way you don't accidentally mark up your top when you're flipping it. So that way you can get all that top part, that hidden part that you don't see and you really have to bend your head over and kink up your neck. So sometimes when you're painting white, there's just those gaps and those gaps just look so black and that's not a detail that you want to show. So the fix for that is just some caulk, plain and simply just some caulk that you can paint over and that's what he's doing right here. There's a little bit of a gap that you didn't see when he, were, he was filling it in with the wood filler but you sure did see it once you painted it white. So you definitely want to paint over your caulk because if you don't, the caulk will yellow over time. So you make sure if you're using caulk like we he just did to paint over it. So now we have some 300 grit on a orbital sander and the rigid sander is one of our favorites because it has a speed control. So you can set this on a low speed. And so that's how he gets that nice, smooth, just, wonderful smooth all that texture any of those brush strokes taken out so this piece will be nice and smooth so now he's moving on to distressing this bench bookshelf 
and he's got some 220 sandpaper and he's hitting it with those sharp edges. So the harder you push on that sandpaper, the more you'll see the black. And if you want to see a little bit of the wood, you push even harder. And since he took the time to pre-paint those black, he's going to go lightly so just the black shows through. And then to get that really smooth finish, he takes some 300 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and the rigid sander has a speed control. So he's on the slowest speed and just getting that nice smooth finish. So for a little extra protection, he is using a top coat of polycrylic on this item. I can see this as a bench in an entryway where some people might put their shoes on. So just a little bit little bit more protection and then he's just going in with a little bit just to buff a little bit of that polycrylic even though that's a matte finish it still comes out kind of shiny and then he still wants to wax this piece so if he just waxed over without pre-buffing the wax would, wouldn't have anything to grab onto so he just has his little scuff sander where he's just opening up that polycrylic And now he's just going in with that Verithane finishing wax in the natural. This is a buff on and a wipe off kind of finish. I absolutely love that. No, it does not yellow. And for some reason, we can only find it at our Home Depot. So I just absolutely love how this piece is turning out, just distressing those edges, letting that black throw th show through, just shows those little bitty hidden details that you didn't see before when it was just a wood color. But I still think that this bench just needs a little bit more. It is nice and white, but it's a little bit on the plain side. So Chris is cutting up some foam for the cushion. I buy my foam off of Amazon. I absolutely love the denseness of it. That means how thick it is and how over time it won't flatten. So my go-to for Reupholstering is a drop cloth fabric. I get it from Amazon. Our Harbor Freight is my favorite place. I pre-wash it, no fabric softener, so it's always ready to go. So what I did was I pinned it all going the same way on the long side of this piece of foam, just around the foam. So now I need to remove my pre-pinned piece of drop cloth fabric off the foam. I can't say that it's the easiest because it that foam makes it really stick. And so be careful not to stick yourself with the pins. So for this long piece that I'm sewing, I'm using my sewing machine. I am just a basic sewer. I do not sew anything fancy, but a straight stitch I can do. So I know that I have a matching thread that matches the drop cloth fabric. And so what I'm doing here is I'm starting it off and then reversing it to get that nice, so that that is staying in place. And then I just run it slowly down, removing the pins as I go, trying to eyeball, trying to find a guide of a piece of a line of that fabric to stay nice and straight. Because I know that my pins, as I'm pinning them in, aren't probably the straightest. So I just kind of eyeball where I can see a straight line of this fabric. When I get to the end here, I do the same thing I did at the beginning. I reverse my machine and go back a couple times to make sure that that thread is staying in place. So now I'm going to go in and cut off that excess fabric before reversing it inside out to get the right side before putting it on my cushion. So basically you're making a pillowcase, but your two ends are not closed up yet. So I have to say this foam is very grabby to the fabric, which is a good thing once it's on because I want that seam that I just made to be centered in the middle of the back. So this is how I finish up my sides. Yes, I know I could have sewed one side shut, 
but I never have luck making them matching. I kind of just make them into a package like I'm folding a package. That's why I want to have matching thread. I fold it over, I pin it into place so that it's nice and tight on this foam, and then I cut off any extra that might be laying over the foam when I'm pulling it so it doesn't have pucker, so it's going to be laying nice and tight against it, and I've Fold that unfinished edge just over. See how I'm just making it into a package and then pinning it into place. And then for me, when it comes to folding this top flap over, I want to line that up with that middle seam that I put towards the back. So it looks, appears to that I have sewed the whole thing, but unfortunately for these sides, I'm going to have to hand sew them. So for the opposite side, I had a little bit more extra fabric. This is where I said I went in and I cut it to where it was not going over that foam. It's easier to cut afterwards, so I make sure that I'm not cutting it too short. And then I have learned since I feel as drop cloth fabric is stretchy, that I start in the middle of a project and I work towards one of the end. That way that I don't end up with too much fabric at the end. And so where I have my matching thread, I go underneath of where I am going to be sewing, grab a little bit of that fabric and go and go into the top fabric. That way you don't see too much of my thread. This is just one of those sit back and enjoy what you're doing kind of things when you're hand sewing. I just, I am not a seamstress, but I can make a nice cushion. Sorry, that was the cat shaking the tripod. And um, just to hide that thread, I know that I am not good at making an even stitch all the way down. So I try to hide as much thread as I can. By going underneath it and grabbing it, I, that helps you hide your thread. So when it comes to that V part, you just have to work your way up one side until you get to the top and then I cut my thread and then I tie it into a knot. Right here is where I'm trying to make sure that my seam lines up with that V portion as best as I can. I know it's going to be hidden but it makes me feel better to try to line it up. So I have the best luck hiding my thread if I just cut that thread off, I separate those two strands and I just make a double knot on the top of where these two threads meet. I just have the best luck. I don't have so much overhang of the thread showing. I hope that I hope that I'm explaining this well to anybody who'd like to make their own cushion. And then I start right in that middle where I can hide from going underneath to hide to that edge. If when I tie my knot at the edge of the thread, I cut any excess thread off so I don't have any thread hanging. And then just do the same thing, work my way down that portion of the V. Same thing when I get to the end, cutting my thread off, tying it in that double knot. So you're probably all glad that that portion's done, but I just want to share with you how I make my cushions. So I have to finish off this cushion. I just, I can't leave it just plain. Of course, I'm going to have to add some green sack striping to it. So I'm just making sure I'm using the two inch tape here. This is a very long cushion. So I want a nice wide center stripe. And I'm actually going to make this reversible. I'm going to put some letters on the front and just some plain on the one side. So if somebody doesn't want it or change it out or if the one side gets dirty they can flip it over i just thought that was kind of fun to do since i felt like i didn't do too bad of a sewing job on this one so you just never know when you're hand sewing how well it's going to turn out so yep i'm just laying two pieces of masking tape on either side of that piece of two inch tape and i did i wrapped it all the way around so i can make a center stripe for my grain sap striping so for this color stripe, I am using the Apple Barrel Multi-Use. I like the multi-use paint for the, my fabric. 
and I'm going to be going over this about four times only because I noticed that the white was just kind of soaking in and I wanted that white to be able to pop. So I just used the assistance of a blow dryer as I spin this cushion around and getting my coats on. And I find it's best, not like when you're doing a stencil on a piece of wood or metal, that dabbing technique for to get it into this fabric, I make sure that my tape is nice and down, nice and tight as I could get, and I really do just kind of rub it right into that fabric, kind of pressing it down. That fabric, it needs to be pushed into this drop cloth fabric a little bit more. So I definitely think that it paid off doing the four coats so that white really popped against that linen color of the drop cloth. For my next striping, I just imagined how big I wanted my striping, how much space I wanted to be between my two stripings and just laid more masking tape down. Then painted those stripes just like I did the first one. This was my inspiration picture off of Pinterest, though I love a coffee sacks. They're not very soft to sit on. For me as a reseller, not only do I want it to look nice, but I want it to be useful and you to be able to sit on it comfortably. So I cut this as big a size as I could using my Silhouette Cameo. I can link all the fonts and what font I used for each word down in the description. For me, when I'm putting it on, I use the permanent vinyl, the Oracle 5 or 651, and I'm centering it because I want you to be able to see that stripe. That was my center point. So I have one side that is basically centered and the other side that's kind of hanging out there, but I want it to look like that old coffee sack that they used. So for me, the permanent vinyl, this Oracle 651 works the best. You do have to go very slowly, very gingerly as you're working, especially those little center parts, but it does stick to this fabric quite well. And then if you notice, I cut off any of that excess vinyl that didn't have any wording. That just makes it a little bit easier to remove this transfer tape. I use the Duck Bion contact paper as my transfer tape. And especially when you're trying to apply the vinyl to any type of fabric, I find a well-loved use of a transfer tape, meaning that you dusted something in your house with it to make it a little bit less sticky definitely helps the two release from each other. And then I find a little bit more help, helpful is making sure that I've rubbed that on with a little bit of heat of a blow dryer. It kind of blends that with that fabric. It will come off, but it, that way you don't get any air pockets or any creases. Just a little bit heat of that blow dryer kind of melts the two in together just for your stencil use. Now for this color, I'm using that black multi-use apple barrel paint. You can get this at Amazon, you can get this at Walmart. And the same thing, I really, I'm going to go over this multiple times with that black to achieve the black color that I'm looking for. It's, you're kind of dabbing, but then you're kind of also kind of smush it in. Drop cloth fabric has a little bit of knobbies on it, so you definitely want to work it into the fabric, but not so much paint on that little dabber that you're pushing it underneath and making blurred letters. And then because I'm impatient to wait for paint to dry, I get that blow dryer back out and I let it help me dry this paint before moving on to my next coat. And I do use the blow dryer just a little bit on the tip to help me get it started to remove this vinyl. But as you see, the vinyl comes right off of this fabric. So the special thing about that multi-use apple barrel paint is I'm using a piece of parchment paper and a no steam iron, but it did have a little bit of water left in, so you might see some steam coming out, what to do. So what it does here is I'm just heating up that paint and what it's doing is going from hard and crusty paint on top of a fabric to nice and soft and blended in. And I will say that I've had things like this in my house. I have used my carpet cleaner. I have done covers that I have painted and I've washed them in the washing machine on cold in a delicate cycle and the, the paint is still there. 
and I do seal any of my fabric projects in with scotch card but this is smelly stuff so you need to do it outside so I took this outside sprayed the one side with a generous coat of scotch card waited for that to dry and flipped it over and did the other side we could have sold this piece as is. It is a nice piece. We paid $6.99 at Salvation Army for it. And at this, we could have flipped it maybe for $45. So making that cushion and putting those grain sack stripings on it, we could have sold this in our area for $65 is normally what we'd get for a bench like this. But adding that coffee grain sack wording and making this reversible, I think I should be able to get $85 out of this cute little bench. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of this furniture flip? Was it something you would have stayed away or did we inspire you or help you out in any way? If we help, if you walk away with one little tip that we shared with you that has worked for us, then this video was well worth being made. So I thank you again so much for watching today's video and if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Just your kind comments and your tips that you share with us. We share our tips, you share your tips, just makes this YouTube channel work. And if you're new to our channel and checking us out for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. Thanks again for watching.